Hello guys, we are launching this new podcast episode series where I will bring on guests and do an episode for 11 minutes. 11 minutes set, let's go. So what's up man? Um, I'm glad to have you on the podcast. Can you please give the audience a little bit of introduction of yourself, what you do and how you got started? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. So I'm Yuri. I'm currently 21 years old and I do YouTube automation. It's a business model where you simply own YouTube channels, but you don't specifically create the content yourself. So you pretty much outsource the video production part. And then that's kind of like where you can make a profit as long as your videos perform well. And yeah, I kind of got started with this because I was making videos myself um, early, like early 2019 and then slowly but surely. I got introduced to this business model and it made more sense to to do it this way cuz uh you can scale it much faster and better to be honest. How did you get how did you get introduced to it? Um I'm pretty sure at the time there were a couple of these guys on Instagram that just kept spamming uh, I believe they still do to be honest. They kept spamming their Instagram stories with results and stuff like that. You, you, we've probably all seen it um and they made like 100k or whatever just crazy amounts in general. And yeah, kind of like through that, so I was like, okay, so what are they doing? Because clearly they were not like a personal brand. They were not showing their own face or they were not like using, I mean, making their own videos. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like how I rolled into it. I kind of just randomly came across it on Instagram, I think. Mm-hmm. So for, for, for people that are watching it and are unaware of this YouTube automation thing, like how can mm-hmm. someone get started? What should someone keep in mind before like going full in and spending a bunch of money that that money would be wasted? What do people need to get started with this YouTube automation? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, so in my opinion, there are two ways to do it. Um, you can get started right away with the actual YouTube automation stuff, but you can only do that if you've got a budget, of course, or you can just simply start a faceless YouTube channel yourself. Um, if you don't have a budget and then slowly but surely you can turn it into an automation channel um, because I know a lot of you probably watching this don't have a couple hundred bucks to spend per month on video production. So what you could do if that's if that's you, you can start a faceless channel where you can do voiceovers, uh, screen recording content, basically all sorts of videos as long as you don't show your face because if you show your face, then your personal brand, you yourself are attached to the channel and people are probably coming to the channel for you. So you cannot automate it. You cannot put some random guy on that channel. It's not going to work. So if you start a faceless channel later down the line, you can automate it um, by simply switching to a different voiceover and that's it. You're done. Um, And then if you already have the budget, you can simply get going right away with the video production part. You can hire people on platforms like Upwork, Fiverr, freelancer.com. There are so many out there. Um, what you got to be careful of is probably, first of all, choosing a niche that you can monetize. I've seen a lot of people that go into um, niches like the meditation niche, and then they just simply take these random clips from whatever website, they put some audio on it, and they think that's going to get monetized, which unfortunately doesn't work anymore these days. So I would say what you should avoid, and there are probably like so many things, so it's really hard to just give you guys one thing or multiple things or whatsoever. Um, But yeah, do your research, make sure that there are other channels, big channels in that niche, so that at least you're sure that it's a proven concept. I guess that's the, that's the best advice I can give. Make sure that's a proven concept. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, especially if you're just getting started. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for, for someone who's very passionate into the meditation niche, what would be your approach to that meditation niche that you have, you have explained that, um, through that method that you have explained by taking some random clips and adding some music will fail, what will your approach be? If you're going to decide and go do that, which I don't really recommend anymore, but if you still want to do it, then I guess the best way to do it would probably be to create your own uh, footage. So your own content, you've, you've probably seen these rain videos. You can shoot those yourself outside if it's raining. Um, so yeah, probably what I should, what I would then do and what I recommend doing, if you're going to still decide to do it, is make sure that you create your own content, that you own your own stuff, because otherwise what will happen is that if you get it from some random stock footage website or wherever you're going to get it from, there are probably another thousand people that are going to get it from that same place. You end up with the same kind of videos, YouTube will notice, and then you're pretty much done for because you're probably not going to get monetized. So yeah, what I would say is create your own videos then which is still hard. So if you're going to do it the automation way, then you probably have to get someone that's going to make those videos. So 
yeah, that's why I just why I just said it's probably not the best thing to do if you're getting started. Mm -hmm. So can you explain more more about the automation part? Because as I have understood, mm -hmm. maybe the others can understand. You hire people yeah. to do the YouTube videos, so that's why you don't connect your brand and your phrase and your um, your voice to it, so you can then like outsource it to other people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So for example, if we take a look at Mr. Beast, Logan Paul, you know, all of these big time YouTubers, David Dobrik, whatever, right? If they now start uh, uploading or they would get you or me to make videos on their channel, it is not going to work because all of the people are there for David Dobrik, uh, for David Dobrik, Logan Paul, Mr. Beast. So they're pretty much there for their personality. But with the YouTube automation channels, um, the viewers are not there for a specific person, but they are really there for the video itself. So they don't really care about who's doing the voiceover. You can do it. I can do it. Some random guy can do it. And that is why that concept actually works so well. So like the basic way how you can do this is you simply have a video, you break it down into the content layers, uh, what I like to call them. So you've got a script writer, a voiceover, a video editor, and a thumbnail designer. Most of the time, it's not always in that. It's like, it's not always the case, but most of the time and most YouTube automation videos will have those four layers. And then you can hire a script writer. Um, you can hire the voiceover, the video editor, and a full video pretty much. So they're going to do um, the work and then slowly but surely at the end of the like as, as, as long as everyone does their work at the end of the day, you got a full video, which you can then upload and because your brand is not attached to it or your personal face. You don't have to be like in the videos or on the channel yourself. You're pointing to the person that's running it behind the scenes. So what kind of content should people create in, in some niche? Maybe you can give us examples of niche that you have in mind that you can get brainstorm some ideas that people can um, get and start creating content because a lot of people get their, their, um, the information, but they don't know how to start. So what are yeah, some content yeah, ideas 100%. that they can start with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now, one of the best niches that I see is the NFT niche or the metaverse stuff. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen it. You probably have, but there's like, it's booming right now. A lot of content on Instagram, Twitter. So it's really blowing up, but because it's new, there are not so many people that have made videos yet about it. So it's pretty easy to break in the, into that niche and the barrier to entry is pretty low right now. Um, that's most of like most of the time, the, like the kind of niches that I try and find how you get started is, uh, well, first of all, you got to make sure to, to understand how to create the content. If you don't know how to do that yourself, or you, you don't know what you need, it's hard to give the instructions to the team. But after that, you can hire a, once again, a script writer, a voiceover and a video editor on artwork. You can do that by just going to the website, you sign up, you click on post a job. You can then put in like script writer, blah, 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 all of the requirements, um, voiceover, all the requirements, video editor, and you can keep that going. It's kind of like hard to explain real quick, but it's not, it's not hard. You just go to Upwork and you'll probably get it done if you just spend a couple minutes on it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how you like, how do you get started? There's not like a specific way. That's, that's what a lot of people think. It's like, okay, you do this, this, and this, and boom, you've got it going. But there are like mul multiple ways and not a specific way to get started pretty much. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure how to like package that into, okay, you do this, this, and this, and that's it. There are like multiple ways to do it. And it's not always the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. What are your thoughts about YouTube SEO? Because a lot of YouTubers are, are optimizing the video with a system called like VidIQ. Some others don't. And like, does yeah. it work? Does it don't work? Do you use it? Do you don't use it? Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. So YouTube SEO is kind of funny. You ask It's kind of my, my main skill, my kind, like my thing, to be honest, um, because I, you've got a lot of traffic sources on YouTube. Um, most of the views in general on the platform come from browse suggested, right? Because it's easier to, to recommend through that way. Most of my channels and most of my views are coming from YouTube search, which is pretty much comes down to SEO, right? For the softwares, I don't use vidIQ. I don't use TubeBuddy. I don't use any tool anymore to for the SEO part to figure out, okay, is this a good video topic? Should I do this specific word in the title? Should I do this, this, and this? I don't use that anymore. I have used that though. And like in 2019, when I was just starting, I did use it right now. I'm kind of at this point where I'm like, um, I kind of just know what works and what doesn't work. And I can go based on the data and the experience from the last two years. So I don't use it anymore, but it's definitely like some of the tools are definitely helpful, but don't expect them to be to do all the work for you. Let's put it that way. Cause these, 
uh, softwares give you like the scores, right? So you type in whatever keyword and they give you a score. If that score is 100 or 90 or 80 or whatever, people think, oh, this is amazing. It's going to do very well and blow up. But that's not really the case. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put too much trust on these uh, scores on the softwares and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very interesting to know because for, for me and my clients, um, we do like YouTube SEO and YouTube SEO like helped mm -hmm. my clients, ch it basically changed their lives. Now we have some YouTube yeah, SEO guys well. that, um, mm -hmm. that they optimize th through VRIQ and they get like a hundred out of a hundred VRIQ SEO score. So that's very good. For example, yeah. for, for our future, because we don't have a lot of time left, um, for our, mm -hmm. our future, we started like with 500, 500 subscribers in 2nd of October and now they're at 60 something thousand. So we have generated 80 million views through just change, through just optimizing for YouTube SEO. So it reaches the right exactly. people to watch their content because if your business mm -hmm. and you market to people who are in meditation are related, you will go unnoticed yeah. and you lost your money, you lost everything. So yeah, mm -hmm. thank yeah, you exactly. for coming on. Um, we're, we're out of time. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the That's next quick. one. <laughs> Peace.